All right then, so now we're grabbing our data right here and we're outputting all of that data inside this notes component. And we can see that in the browser right here, but at the minute it doesn't look great. And what I'd like to do is start to work on the layout a little bit. Now, when it comes to layouts using Material UI, the main components we'd use are the grid components. So Material offers us a 12 column grid system based on Flexbox and it's very simple to use. So what I'm going to do is first of all, import a couple of things at the top of this notes page. The first one is going to be grid. This is the grid component we're going to use to create a grid layout. And then the second one is paper, which we're going to use inside that grid. And this is kind of like a very, very simplistic card. If you like, it's meant to look like a piece of paper on the screen with a bit of elevation. That's just to put our content inside. So then. Down here, let's do a simple example of this grid. So we're gonna use this grid component right here. Now there's two things we need when we're creating a grid layout. The first one is a grid container. That's like a wrapper around all of the elements inside the grid. And then the second thing is grid items. They're the things that are gonna be laid out on the grid. So first of all, I'm gonna create a grid container. Now that is just the grid component, but we pass in a prop called container. And that tells Material UI that this is the container. And now inside here, we can place grid items. So let's do that. I'm going to say grid, like so. The same components. This should be grid, not GERD. So grid and grid. And then inside here, we're just going to output the paper component, like so. And we'll output a number, one. Now then, what I'm going to do is copy this and paste it few times down here so we have four items in total I'll change this to two this to three and this to four now I said that this should be a grid item this is a grid item as well and this and this so we have to say that these are grid items so I'm going to alt click all of these and pass in a prop to each one which is item so now we're saying these are all grid items things that are inside the grid container so if I save this now by default we get one, two, three, four, all next to each other. And if we zoom in, you can kind of see that paper component. It's like a little bubble around the number with a drop shadow, okay? All right then. So by default, when we have a grid like this, all it does is line them up left to right because without those, they would go one on top of each other like these things right here. But the default behavior of the grid is to put things next to each other in a row. Now, at the minute, they're all squashed up on the left, and I want to make them into a grid so they take up the whole space of the page, so that each one has an equal width on that page. So, how do we do this? Well, we have to specify how many columns each grid item is going to take up. Now, I said before that the grid is a 12-column grid system, so we can distribute the columns between these four items. So if we take 12 and divide that by four items, I'd say three columns for each item, right? Now, the grid system is also responsive and we can specify how many columns each item takes up at different screen widths. So for example, I could say from medium sized screens and up, that's MD, I would say I want this to take three columns up and I'm going to do the same for each one of these things. So I'll copy it here and paste it here, paste it here and paste it here. And remember these breakpoints are built in to material UI. So on our screen at the minute, each one of these now should have a column width of three columns. So they should each take up a quarter of the page, but it doesn't. So let me just zoom out to normal size. And that's why it was because I was zoomed in. So now when we go to normal size, we can see each one of these columns is taking up a quarter of the width of the screen, right? But when we get down to this kind of size, which is less than medium, then it's not showing those widths anymore. They're bunching back up on the left. And that's because this grid system right here is saying that only for medium sized screens and up should it be three columns. Below that, it reverts back to type. Now, what I tend to do is start at the very smallest screen size, and that is extra small. And what I would do is say, okay, at this screen size, I want each of these items to take up maybe 12 columns in width. And that would be the whole width of the page because the grid is only 12 columns across. So if I take this and paste it down in each one of these, like so, and save this, 
what I'm going to do is move this down. You can see each one of these now is taking up the whole width of the screen. It's taken up all 12 columns on the grid. But the minute we get to a medium sized screen now, it's going to break up so they all have three columns each instead and they sit next to each other. So you can see how this grid system is responsive. OK, so let's also add in another breakpoint. I'm going to say for each of these, so I'll alt click to do it all at once. For each of these, I'm going to add the small breakpoint and at small sized screens and up, I'm going to say six columns. So for extra small and up, it would be 12 columns. So the smallest size screen, 12 columns. When it gets to a small size screen, which is a little bit larger, it's going to be six columns. So let me take this out a little bit. We can see six columns now, so six on the left and six on the right. So there's two next to each other. And then the other two automatically go down to the next row. And then when it gets to medium sized screens, it's going to go to three columns like that. And that would be it then. As far as we get out wide, it's always going to be this width each column. So we could also add in the large breakpoints right here, but we don't need to do that for our case. I think this looks fine. So that's how to use the grid system. Pretty simple, right? Now, what I want to do is comment out that example. And instead, I want to put these things in a grid right here. So how do I do that? Well, each of these items that we're outputting for a note is going to be a grid item. And remember, around grid items, we need a grid container. So let's do a grid container around this thing. First of all, grid and we'll say container like so. We'll take the closing grid tag and we'll paste it at the end over here and scoot this in. Now each of these things now needs to be a grid item. So we'll say grid item like so and close this off over here. Grid. OK, cool. So now let's take all of this stuff right here. I'm going to cut that and I'm going to add in the paper components and paste it inside the paper just so it's elevated a little bit on the screen. All right, so this thing right here is still getting the key because it's the root element inside this map function right here. But now it's a grid item. Now, remember, by default, these should all sit next to each other now. But we need to apply columns to them because they're all slightly different widths dependent on their width of the text. So let's now go to this grid item and apply these different widths. I'm going to say for extra small size screens, it should be 12 columns. And then for medium, it's going to be six. And then for large, it's going to be four. So let's give this a whirl. So you can see if I make this into the largest screen, we have three items next to each other because each one has four columns of width. Four plus four plus four is 12. And the next one goes to the next line down. If we scoot this down, when we get to a medium size screen, it's going to be six columns in width, each one of these. And then when we get to a smaller size screen, they're all going to stack on top of each other. OK, cool. So that's the grid system sorted. And that's kind of the grid layout I want for this. Now, there's one more thing I'm going to do, and that is to turn this into a container instead. So let me just change that down here as well. And that should have auto imported at the top. Let me just check that. Yep import container from material UI core. And we talked about this before. All it does is apply a bit of margin and padding to the content. So let's preview this again. And now we get a bit of margin and padding on the left and right. Cool. So although that doesn't look great at the minute, it's the grid system set up at least. And next we can start to work on these individual items. And instead of using paper, we're going to use the card component. And I'll show you that next.